He's going to be in Martinsburg today, later on, uh, right around lunchtime or so, the governor of the state of West Virginia, Jim Justice. Governor Justice, I believe we have you queued up and ready to go. Good morning, sir. How are you? Hey, Rob. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, you're still in Charleston, right? I am, yes, sir. And I understand that uh, some of your flying buddies on the way up here today include House Majority Leader Eric Householder and Vice Chair of Finance John Hardy. Do I have my facts correct? Yes, sir, you do. Yes, sir. All right. Very nice. Hey, uh, let's talk about your appearance here in Martinsburg today at the, at the old courthouse. Uh, first and foremost, uh, your main topic of conversation, I presume, is going to be the 50% personal income tax cut? Without any question, Rob. You know, it's, uh, it's a mighty, mighty important time in West Virginia. And, uh, you know, we've got an opportunity to be on belief. And, and I think we should be, you know, we've got, we're two thirds of the way there with the House and myself, and we just got to get the Senate, you know, across the finish line. But uh, but it'll put real live money back in the pockets of hardworking West Virginians all across the state and make a lot of great things happen, you know, to, to our state as we go forward. The sticking point appears to be the Senate right now. We've had Craig Blair on the program, the Senate President, Senator Ryan Weld, Senator Jason Barrett, and they've all said that they want to take a slower approach. And they like to gather more information, bring in experts, CPAs, tax attorneys, and such, and go over the details of this uh, at a slower pace. What's your communication been like with the Senate since they've asked for more information? Well, Rob, it, it, you know, we want to, I want to stay as positive as I can possibly say, but, uh, but the reality is just this. We've had multiple discussions. We've had you know, I've been I've been to Senator Blair's office. Uh, you know, the, you know, sat down with him. You know, an hour and talked about all this stuff. I've uh, we've had breakfasts. You know, the, where we've had Senate and House leadership there. You know, we've had two different breakfasts. We we have another one scheduled for this coming Thursday. Uh, you know, really, basically, the gist of the whole thing is, you know, Senator Blair and. And and the Senate leadership, they they're the ones that came up with the idea. Said we need to go to fifty percent. Well, you know they pushed us really, and we 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 stepped up to the to the plate. You know, we, absolutely without any question, we have vetted these numbers every way you could possibly vet them. The Senate says, well, we have another plan. Well, where is the plan? I mean, you know, if, you know, we keep we keep saying we're gonna we're gonna come and we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about our plan well, where is the plan you know and you know that's that's the 64 dollar question right now you know and and behind all of that but but beyond all that you know rob excuse me but uh we absolutely want to be totally transparent in the, in the numbers you know there's no question you know that uh, dave hardy our Secretary of Revenue and all of his crew have worked weeks and weeks and weeks, not a few hours, but weeks and weeks in vetting these numbers to get us to where we are. I mean, you know, Rob, say what you want, but when I walked in the door, our state was bankrupt. There is no other way around it. And today our state is cooking. And if anybody in the world could possibly think that Jim Justice in his parting days wants to do something to mess that up, they've got to be out of their mind. I mean, all I'm trying to do is absolutely propel West Virginia beyond belief and bring more growth to West Virginia. We need people in West Virginia. We need workers, young people that will help, you know, from the standpoint of carrying the load with our schools and our roads and everything, you know. But but in all that being said, you know, I've got everything in the world ringing here, but uh, – but with all that being said, I do think there's, I do think there's a real opportunity right in front of us, and I do think the Senate will come on board, and uh, and and we want to work together. I mean, you know, I'm willing to sit down, compromise. You know, if we want if we want to go at a little bit slower approach, let's spread it out over four or five years instead of three years. Absolutely, this can be done, but it can't be done if we just absolutely just procrastinate and say. We've got a plan, but we've never seen the plan. You know, I mean, the House voted 95 to 2, 95 to 2, you know, about this. This should have already been passed. This should be law right now. 
and uh, and our and our citizens really deserve it. So I don't know how to say it any more bluntly than that. The Senate has said they don't trust Revenue Secretary Hardy's numbers. When they say your numbers, I assume they mean the numbers you got from Secretary Hardy about the uh, billion-dollar surpluses going forward into the next three years. Have they requested any more information from you to be able to further examine those revenue estimates? Not to my knowledge. You know, and it's, and it's easy to say these kind of things when really your motivation may very well be to try any and everything you can do to just not do something. You know, Rob, I, I, you know, I'll promise you any request that they may have, we will, we will immediately fulfill. You know, there is no way. There's no way in the world we won't supply any and all information that we have, you know, <clears throat> because we want absolutely everyone to look at it. And, and you know, and if someone – can find something that we've missed, great, you know, but uh, but I don't think they're going to do that. Are you confident in the numbers Secretary Hardy has come up with to feel that the billion-dollar surpluses into the next three years are a reality? Absolutely. Absolutely I'm confident. I, You know, like I said, Rock, there's not a chance in the world that I would jeopardize all that I've worked for all across these years. There's no way. There's just no way. Now, in all honesty, you know, what what this tactic is to scare people, you know. I mean, we're, we're in, in, in no way, you know, in my budget, I propose pay raises, you know, for our people, you know, for all government employees, especially the teachers, so we can be more and more and more competitive from an education standpoint. We've got lots to do there. You know, we need pay raises with our <clears throat> – CPS workers, you know, our child protective services workers. We need pay raises yeah, absolutely for, for the you know all the corrections people or, or the, the you know all the terrible vacancies that we have in corrections today. But all of that can be done, especially if we will just sit down and absolutely work through the numbers together in a constructive way, and still we can do substantial substantial tax cuts, and our people want that. You know, you, know, you know, we're still trying to retrade Amendment 2. People spoke, 65-35. The people spoke. We are there to do the people's work, not our work. We're there to do the people's will. You know, at the, at the end of the day, we don't need to retrade Amendment 2. We don't need to to, you know, have a pity party about Amendment 2. We need to be grown-ups and get on with what we should be doing, you know. But right now, the Senate says they're going to come with a plan. Nobody's seen the plan, you know. And and if if we just keep procrastinating, what will happen is we'll get to the point in time where, Rob, you can mark it down. The Jim Justice is telling you we're going to do one of two things. We're either going to put money back in the pockets of every West Virginian and give them the opportunity to do with their money what they should do, what they choose to do with it. And literally, that will not only send signals all across the land and drive growth to us and lots of good things, or we're going to keep money in Charleston and let Charleston spend it as they choose to spend it. And literally, there'll be a lot of bloated programs that will come about. We will grow government. We'll spin around four times, and we will absolutely go nowhere. Now, it's going to be one of the two. We're either going to put the money in our people's pockets, or we're going to keep the money in Charleston and let Charleston spend it as they choose to, how they choose to do so. One of the two. Let's go to Matt Miller. Next question. Governor Justice, you mentioned earlier those breakfast meetings and, and talked again uh, just a moment ago even about, you know, the, being able to get together, come together. Uh, has anything come from those meetings? Are they accomplishing anything as you try to get the Senate on board? Well, I hope so. You know, uh, I think everyone wants to keep talking, and that's that's constructive. You know, uh, you know I, I, I think, you know, there is a – a, a real breakdown, and I think I think this is fair to say. I think there's a, 
a breakdown in the, in the room with everyone with, uh, you know, finest chair tar, you know, and, uh, and so I think, I think, I think, you know, there's just, uh, uh, you know, if a professional breakdown, you know, but, uh, but, but I think, you know, Senator Blair has been good and, uh, and you know, and 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 Senator Katubo Kutu, has has been really good. Of course, all the people on the House side, you know, whether it be Vernon Chris or Eric Householder, you know, they've been just great. You know, Speaker Hanshaw has been great, and everybody's been trying to work together because at the end of the day, you know, we all we all really need to just do exactly that. We need to. We need to listen to the other views, be respectful of the other views, and then we need to try, try to compromise and get us across the finish line. That's what everybody needs to do. What are some of those main disagreements still there? Obviously, we heard uh, earlier uh, on our program, uh, what, last week uh, from the Senate president uh, and that, that the numbers weren't necessarily coming together when... Too when much spending, I think, is what Yep, the Senate said. looks at that House plan. Well, look, guys, you know, I have, I have put forth my budget in the state of the state I, you know, I've outlined, you know, everything from the buckets of dollars that we have, how we can do one-time spending on those buckets, which is really important. You know, if you do one-time spending, those buckets of the dollars that are out there and everything don't have anything really to do with, the, you know, the future of a reduction in your personal income tax. What has everything to do with that is, the is is where you stand revenue wise now what you pro, uh, project your revenues will be what you project your expenses will be into the future and everything all those numbers you know i'll promise you that that uh, that our revenue department people that have been there a long 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 time and people that know those numbers up in one side and down the other you know absolutely have vetted those numbers teetotally to death and uh and like i said if there's if there's compromise that needs to be made if if people now you know that said we want to go to 50 percent now you know people are locked jawed and they and they say no we'd really like to go at a slower rate and everything okay that's fine but at the end of the day the policy the policy should be put the money in the people's pocket rather than put the money in Charleston and let them pass it out to whatever, to big corporations or pet projects or whatever, whatever the situation may be. You know, we can, we can absolutely get on a path that we send a message all across the globe that West Virginia is eliminating their state income tax, and you'll drive real growth here. If you go build a building or two, you know, and 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 you spend the money and the money's gone, you spend around five times and everything, what's going to happen? West Virginia is going to slip back, and absolutely West Virginia then is going to miss an opportunity to be on belief. John Gilstrap. Good morning, Governor. Uh, in your conversations, in your meetings and, and breakfast and, and such with, with President Blair and, and the rest of the Senate, are there specific sticking points that you discuss? Are there individual items where they say, well, if, if you come off this and this, then I'll sign on, or if you give me this, I, I, we will sign on? Are there specific issues that need to be addressed? There should be. There absolutely should be. But what we get more than anything is – well, we're still looking at the numbers. We're going to have some experts come in. We're going to evaluate the numbers ourselves. We're going to look at this, and we get basically what, I mean, you, we can call it anything we want, but it's procrastination. I mean, it's just, it's just talking about the potential dark of the closet. We don't trust your numbers. We want to, come, we want to look at our own numbers. You know, well, great. You know, well, what are your numbers? Or we, we want to maybe come back with a different plan. Okay, great. Well, what is your plan? You know, anybody, I mean, listen, guys, 
you know, the one thing you've got to give me, you know, is, you know, my family started out in life. My grandparents never had indoor plumbing. And, you know, and we built an empire. Well, I'll promise you, you had to have thousands of negotiations. And I've been in thousands of them. You know, and and in doing so, you know, if one side is just saying, well, well, I'm thinking about something, you know, I don't really like the numbers that you come up with, and I'm thinking about something. Well, it's really tough to get to, get, to make progress when you're thinking about something, and you can't tell anybody anything about what you're thinking about. You know, it's, it's not like you're saying, the other side says it's a seven, and I say it's a nine, and then we we decide, well, would it be best for both of us to compromise on this and settle in on an eight? Well, that would be that would be the way you you make progress moving forward. But if one side, if I say it's a nine and the other side says I'm thinking about something, we don't think it's a nine. What do you think it's a four? Well, we don't we've not decided yet. We, do you think it's the 18? Well, we don't really know. You know, it's just, well, we, we, we're going to have a plan. Well, where is the plan? You know, we may, we may want to even come up with an idea of saying, well, what we would like to do is maybe we can go to an income tax break like this, but we want to maybe possibly – add sales tax to this, increase the sales tax. Well, I don't believe you need to do that at all. I absolutely think that is a terrible mistake. We don't need to trade tax for tax. We don't need to do that. You know, we absolutely have vetted these numbers to death. But but we don't, you know, it's, I mean, this is the ultimate of being in an auction by yourself. You bid one thing. Nobody else says anything. Well, you bid something else. You know, this is absolutely exactly what that is. This is an auction by yourself. Well, speaking of of other taxes, in the run-up to the elections and the discussions on Amendment 2, you mentioned something about a rebate or a credit for personal property taxes that uh, would come back to the citizens of, of West Virginia. Has there been any progress on that? I, I, I absolutely would say no. You know, there. You know, I, I, I wanted. You know, I think from the standpoint of, if we go back to Amendment Two, here's what the voters did. The voters said we want to keep local control. You know, we don't want Charleston to to manage our finances. We and and that's basically what they said. Secondly, what they said is we want tax breaks for us, not tax breaks for big out-of-state corporations. Now, that's what happened in Amendment 2. And that's why Amendment 2 just vaporized. Now, 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 right now what we have is, I, you know, I said along the way, well, here's a surefire way if we want just rid of our car tax, you know, which was, you know, portrayed in Amendment 2, but really, Amendment 2 wasn't about your car tax at all. But I said, just to take that off the table, I said, I'll tell you what we can do. We can absolutely rebate you back, let the, count, let the, let the people still pay their, their car tax, and those, those dollars still flow to the counties. And then out of the general revenue, we can take and rebate you an equivalent amount to what you paid in your car tax back. Well, we could do that. I sent that bill right up. I mean, that bill is right in, in, in everybody's lap right now. But, but then, you know, there was even talk from the Senate side, well, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's, let's just rebate back the machinery and inventory tax. Well, I mean, that's not what we did. That's not what the people voted for. That's not what the people in Amendment 2 said. We don't want that. You know, now, we can choose to not listen to the people. I think that would be very, very, very frivolous and, and a big-time mistake, and I wouldn't do that for anything in the world. You know, <clears throat> but, 
but from the car tax standpoint, you know, it's there. It's it, I set it up exactly like I told the people that I would do that. However, let's be real about this. If we can get to a 50%, you know, deduct on your personal income taxes, and absolutely we could get to that and trade that, you know, for any, for any value that you could, you know, possibly attain with a car tax or whatever it may be, that would do two things. It would help our people so much more. And the other thing, it would absolutely drive real live growth to the state of West Virginia. Just getting rid of a car tax isn't going to drive growth to West Virginia that's going to move the dial a tick, you know. But if we want to move the dial or spend a dial, getting on a pathway of really legitimately getting rid of our personal income tax will drive real growth to West Virginia. And from your from from the area that you guys are, you know, in the eastern panhandle, you see all this growth. You see all goodness happening like that. And we need to run a whole lot of your playbook in a lot of different areas of our state. But we've got a lot of areas of our state that, that just having people come to where we have real live workers, real live workers, you know, in our state, it would be very beneficial. And where you guys are, you know, in the eastern panhandle, if we had if we had our taxes not higher but significantly lower than Virginia or Maryland or whatever around, those folks may very well relocate and live in West Virginia. And, therefore, it would just make, make things better and better for our roads, our schools, and on and on. Governor, you have time for one more question before you hit the plane. Sure. Hey, the, you recently found money to increase pay for our local CPS workers here in the eastern panhandle who are at a competitive disadvantage uh, because of the uh, higher salaries paid by surrounding states. Uh, one, how did you find the money? And two, this is kind of a locality pay thing. Is it something we can do for our teachers as well up here and emergency service workers? Well, let me tell you this. You know, let me let me address the back end first. You know, from a locality pay, you know, that that that, you know, comes upon levels of resistance from time to time, you know, in the legislature, because it's like, well, why should people there make more than people in Boone County or wherever it may be? You know, well, the reality is cost of living there is much greater. The competitiveness is much greater, you know, and, and we need to understand that. And I would be an absolute proponent always of locality pay because you have to be competitive. You know, that's all there is to it. From the standpoint of the dollars, you know, we have we have just been digging and digging and digging and finding different ways that we could do things within DHHR. You know, I, I really I, I've got to give this credit to Dr. Coben and Dr. Marsh and General Hoyer. And they found dollars within DHHR that we can significantly increase the CPS workers and, and, and their, their pay and everything. And it absolutely, absolutely, you know, needs to be a, a, well, with the, the increase needs to be there for, for absolute certainty. But in addition to that, you know, we absolutely need to, to constantly consider the locality and the locality potential of locality pay because uh, whether it be corrections or CPS workers or teachers or whatever it may be, you know, different areas of our state face different challenges, and we need to understand that. I mean, one size does not fit all in, in many, many, many situations. So, so I'm, uh, I'm an absolute advocate for exactly what you just said. Governor, thank you very much for your time this morning. We look forward to seeing you in a couple hours here in Martinsburg. All right, I'll be there. I'll be there. Thank you guys so much. You're welcome. Take care. Safe travels, sir. Governor Jim Justice at 933.